what's up y'all and welcome back to my channel today we're just gonna do a chatty get ready with me I have several new products sitting in front of me that I want to test out see how they perform see how they work together and do a wear test see how these hold up for 10 to 12 hours throughout the day I have the new Ilia foundation we've got some YSL bronzer we've got the ColourPop Twilight collection Kelly Ray and even the new polite society blushes as well so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna scooch in and we're gonna play with some makeup so if you want to see how these products perform and what look we create using them then stick around Okay, so I scooched it in just a little bit. I already have on my SPF and I did go ahead and prime my skin as well already. I just went in with the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. I really enjoy this when my skin is feeling just a little bit on the drier side. It just helps to keep it hydrated under the makeup. So this is an oldie, it's a goodie. I always have one and I love it. But I'm gonna pop a little bit of something on my lips. I'm just gonna go in with my Milk Kush Lip Oil. I have cookie dough right here, and I have really been enjoying this. It's lightweight, it's hydrating, it's not sticky, it feels really good on my lips. It doesn't last like a super long time. Once I eat or drink something, it kind of goes away, but it's easy to reapply. They're not super pigmented, so I appreciate that. But let's go ahead and start with foundation. I have the new Ilia Skin Rewind Complexion Stick. I picked this up at Sephora actually like a couple weeks ago at this point and it's just kind of been sitting over here because I've had other things to get to but this is what she looks like it has like this little dent in the side to hold it I have the shade 2C Balsa let me go ahead and give you a little rundown on this foundation so this foundation retails for $48 and it says it is a long wear skincare powered complexion stick that blurs instantly and visibly firms and smooths over time. It is a medium coverage, a natural finish. Um, let's see what else it has. It has ceramide peptide complex to visibly firm and strengthen the skin's barrier. Winged kelp extract restores luminosity, helping skin look more, more youthful. And butterfly lavender extract botanical powerhouse that smooths the look of fine lines and wrinkles. Okay, sounds good. I like the claims of this. I have only ever tried like a few... Um, stick foundations so i was excited to try another one especially from this brand i also haven't tried a lot from this brand either so we're going to try her out together and this is what it looks like it looks like it's going to be a pretty good match <clears throat> so i'm going to go ahead and put some of this okay that's a really good match like that practically disappears into my skin okay Am I putting too much? Maybe. Who knows? I'm going to go ahead and kind of fluff this out a little. Fluff. Hello. Disperse it with a brush. This is a Rare Beauty foundation brush. That looks nice. That covered up most of my redness. I do want to try and build it up, see how much coverage we can get out of this foundation. But just from side to side comparison that looks nice okay <clears throat> and it's not super stiff like it glides on really nicely um if you've tried the one from fenty the what is it the blur stick or whatever it's called the ease drops blur stick it's not quite as creamy as that i will say and Honestly, that's not my favorite either. I do really enjoy it, but it's almost too creamy. But this is going on nicely. Okay, so this is what the complexion is looking like. I think it looks really nice. It looks very soft, very smooth. The foundation is not sitting on top of my skin. I feel like it kind of meshed into it. And this is a really nice shade match. 
it did give me a solid medium coverage you can still see a little bit of my imperfections peeking through like my sunspot right here but you can't really see any of my redness so it's a little bit on the higher end of medium but i did build it up a little bit more on my cheeks so it is buildable and i really really like that okay so far so good we're looking good we have we're starting out on a good positive note. We like that. But let's go ahead and pop over to concealer. I actually have two right here. I have the new Cali Ray Hideaway Brightening Under Eye Corrector, Color Corrector. This is a clean and hydrating serum concealer. And I have the shade Dawn. But then I also have this little guy right here. This is the Kosas Revealer super creamy and brightening concealer i picked this up as an add-on for my boxy charm because i wanted to try it out so i have this as well if this is too bright or the shade isn't working whatever but <clears throat> let me go ahead and read you some of the claims on this concealer because the claims are what kind of drew me in on this one where is it here we go Okay, so this says this is a clean, long-lasting, lightweight serum-like color corrector that quickly brightens and hydrates under eyes to conceal dark circles without caking or creasing. That's what got me. I don't use a lot of brighteners or color correctors under my eyes just because I don't have a lot of um, dark circles or anything, but when it said that it was going to not be cakey or crease you had me okay so this is what it is looking like this is a glass bottle like this is heavy this is weighty this is luxe also i didn't tell you this retails for 28 dollars so not bad at sephora pricing okay this is the doe foot applicator i will say it does come out nice and easy i didn't have to pull really hard that's a big one for me. If it's one that I have to pull really hard and risk getting product everywhere, it really annoys me. But let's go ahead and go in under here. Oh, that feels nice. It's like cooling, very cooling to the touch. It's very creamy, very lightweight. We're going to use a concealer brush. This is a Rare Beauty one. We may not need the co-sauce today. We might save that for another day okay i was scared that this was going to be really really pink because in the pictures it looks really pink and even the little like thing on the end of the box looks like it's hot pink almost so i was afraid it was gonna be too brightening but that looks really really nice and that feels very hydrating very lightweight under my eye like I'm impressed with the way that that feels. Okay, we're going to pop it on the other eye, and I'm also only going to set one of them as well. I want to see how it performs set and unset since it claims to be a cake-free and creaseless corrector, concealer, doodad. Okay, so I have the concealer under both of my eyes, and I'm really, really enjoying this so far. First impression right out the gate I love this. It feels so hydrating and lightweight under my eyes. I know I've already said that, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to set just one under eye. I'm going to set the one on my right hand side. So I'm going to go in with my Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Finish and a little triangle sponge right here. This is one of my absolute favorite um, under eye powders. It's just flawless. It's beautiful. It's lightweight. But I just want to set the one under eye. And I want to leave this one to see how it performs on its own. And then I'm going to set the rest of my face. So I'm just going to go in with a very light hand. I'm going to pick up this um, powder with a brush. And we're going to fluff it onto the skin. Kind of patting and fluffing at the same time. I am feeling this. This is looking beautiful. Okay, so now that we're powdered, let's go ahead and add some color back to this skin. So I picked up the new YSL All Hours Hyper Bronzer. I couldn't resist. I absolutely could not. Um, I did pick this up from Nordstrom. 
This product retails for $65. It does come in five different shades. And it says that it's going to <clears throat> blur imperfections, minimize the appearance of pores while smoothing the skin. So we like that. We like to hear it. And I will say it comes in like a really pretty, like hefty um, container. It's got that same kind of pillowy packaging that the... Um, the eyeshadow quads have and it just looks absolutely beautiful let's open her up so this is what the product looks like i did get the second to lightest shade the lightest one just looked really 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 light and i'm hoping i didn't make a mistake i'm hoping that this isn't super pigmented i don't think it's going to be it'll be fine it'll be fine it'll be absolutely fine but I'm gonna go ahead and go in with a cinch beauty f05 brush and we're going to pick some of this up I do also love the embossing on the pan beautiful okay so she's pigmented <laughs> be aware but it fluffs out beautifully okay please be a winner I love YSL. I really do. I enjoy a lot of their products. I used to absolutely love the YSL foundation and I actually haven't tried it in a while. I burned through one of those and have never replaced it. But I've heard that they've reformulated it, which who isn't reformulating these days, but it is what it is. Okay, that's looking very pretty. It is pigmented. I will say that I probably could have gotten away with the lighter one. I just, I feel like some of these brands are coming out with lighter bronzers and they're almost too light. Like I want a bronzer that's going to give me some color. I'm not looking for subtlety. So I was really afraid to even pick up the lightest one. But this actually looks really pretty. Like I said, go in with a light hand. Don't go in heavy handed. I'm just going to take my powder brush and kind of mesh these two together. I do that a lot with a bronzer anyway, just because I am so fair. I usually just have to go back over it with my powder and that's beautiful. I like it. I'm not having any issues with this it's not skipping it's not grabbing it's not doing anything weird except where I put product over my brow but no so far the complexion is looking really nice I want to feel this okay this feels very smooth yeah so just beware if you do pick this up go in with a light hand it is pigmented but so far it looks beautiful on the skin I'm happy with it I'm happy with the way that it looks but let's do some blush because I have the new what are these called the polite society polite pops powder blush sticks we talked about these in a new makeup Monday a few weeks ago and I was curious I was intrigued I don't normally go for a stick blush but when it says that it's a powder stick blush I want to know if that means it's a powder and stick form or is it a stick um, blush that goes on like a powder like I have questions I need to know so I picked up two shades I picked up Sydney and I picked up Los Angeles let's see these are cute these are really, really cute. Let me go ahead and pull up the Ulta app. I'm not 100% prepared on this, but um, these are cute, like they're tiny. Okay, so these come in six different shades. They retail for $28, and this says that it is a, a powder blush stick that combines the blend, blurring, and build of a powder with the easy to apply, moisturizing, rich color of a cream. So I have a feeling this is going to be more like a cream blush, but let's go ahead and check this out. Also, you get, how much product do you get in this? 0.3 ounces that's not a lot of product but oh okay this is weird because it does feel it feels powdery but it's definitely a cream so it is definitely a cream but when I put it on the back of my hand 
it does have a very powdery finish okay so I think we're actually going to use we're going to use Sydney today because I think it's going to go better. We're going to play with the ColourPop Twilight palette and I just have a feeling that this is going to go better than the bright pink. So how do I want to do this? Do I want to... We're going to try picking it up with a brush first. So this is a Singe Beauty F03 and I'm just going to pick this up with my brush. Okay. Okay, so it's not super pigmented, which as long as it's buildable, I can be on board with a not super pigmented blush. I just want to make sure that's going to build up to something cuz I I like a blush moment. I really do. Okay. That looks pretty. That does look really pretty. It feels nice. It did dry down to a powder. Like it is definitely a powder on my cheek. It didn't lift anything. It didn't disturb the products underneath. I will say, just looking at this eye, I'm getting a little bit, it's settling into under this eye a little bit. The concealer is where I didn't powder it. And it also doesn't look quite as smooth under my eye. Like this one with the powder, it looks a lot smoother. This one doesn't, but we're gonna, we're gonna continue to roll with it and see what it does. But back to the blush, this is sitting really nice on my cheek. So I do like that. And I think this is gonna be the way to go. Okay, that looks cute. I like it. I am so far very happy with the way that my makeup is looking, except for this under eye right here. But I do like the way that it's performing over here and I don't mind powdering my under eye I usually do anyways just because I have this like sort of crease I don't know if you call that a bag or whatever you want to call it so I usually powder under there anyway so it doesn't really bother me it's not like a make or break but let's play with this ColourPop Twilight palette so I did post um, in my community section a little while back wanting to know if y'all wanted to see like a full Twilight collection review and as I figured y'all didn't I knew it I figured but I just wanted to ask just in case I had planned on picking up the palette and the highlighters anyways just for me so I figured there was a few people that wanted to see me use it see my opinion on it so I'm gonna throw this into this get ready with me today so I think we're gonna go ahead and do some highlighter next so I picked up both of these super shock highlighters we have meadow and we have vampire skin so i do enjoy twilight but i am more of a fan of the books i've said it before and usually that's how it is with most things the books are always better than the movie or tv show adaptation anyway and i just i can't get over the casting and the acting and it's just it's a lot and it bugs me i've tried i've seen I think I've seen all of them. I know I've seen at least parts of all of them. Like I've seen the really lame like Bella gives birth scene and it just, it bugged me. It's not what I had pictured in my head. Okay, so this is the shade Meadow. This is pretty. This has like a pink reflect to it. I don't know if the camera is going to pick that up. Super creamy as it should be. Can you see the... Maybe I should have done it. Let's try it on the palm of my hand and see, because usually, yeah. So see how it's got like that pink reflect to it? Very, very pretty. We're gonna put, what is this? <laughs> Meadow on my right cheek. So let me grab a Singe Beauty F07 brush and I'm just going to pick this up and we're going to put this on the cheek. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. I like, I love a pink highlighter. I really do. I think it's because I'm so cool undertoned. It just looks really good on my skin, but that's pretty. It's reflective, it's shiny. 
it's a super shock highlighter it's performing how i would expect it to perform and then let's do vampire skin on this cheek so this one has more of like a true silver highlighter oh yeah this is like this is intense silver highlighter <laughs> okay let's try this one out i'm just gonna wipe off that brush and we're gonna use the same brush for this I do really enjoy the super shock highlighter formula it's not my favorite formula but it is really nice I just I usually prefer like a powder when I'm doing a highlighter just because I feel like I have a little bit more control but I think super shock highlighters are like what nine bucks these days or something like that and it is a fantastic formula so you can't beat that that is beautiful though that is that's a highlight I do like that okay these are beautiful they're fun they're well I shouldn't I shouldn't say they're colors I don't have in my collection but the vampire skin for sure I don't have a whole lot of like silvery highlighters in my collection and it's beautiful yeah Okay, let's hop into this palette. Let's hop into the shining star of the Twilight Collection from ColourPop. So this is what the packaging looks like. I'm sure by now everybody has seen it. And then we open her up, take out the plastic, and this is our palette, our beautiful, cool-toned, earthy palette. We have this picture up here of Bella and Edward and yeah it is what it is but I do like the color story I am really drawn to it I'm drawn to the more murky muted colors and I understand that this is supposed to be based off of the first movie so based off of that I think that this is like it hits the nail on the head it's a beautiful color story I do enjoy it I know so many people were like oh where's the pop of red where's the pop of this and I'm like but it's based off the movies not the books so keeping that in mind I'm not disappointed but Let's go ahead and create a look with this palette. What, what do I want to do? I think what we're going to do is we are going to, we're going to play with some neutrals and then I think we're going to play with this pop of green, maybe the blue. I don't know. Let's go ahead and prime the eyes first. So I'm going to go in with my Sigma eyeshadow base and then we'll jump into this palette. All right, so my eyes are primed. I did do my brows as well. Let's create a look. So I think I want to start with this shade right here. Actually, no, let's start with this shade right here. This is called Unconditionally. So I'm going to pick that up on a Game Beauty E06 brush, and I'm gonna fluff this into my crease. I think we're gonna play with the blues today because I'm loving the murky blues. I think they're beautiful. okay I am getting some kick up in the pan it's not a lot but I'm not getting any fallout I know this is just a lighter color they don't usually have fallout but that's going on nicely this is like a really pretty like steel blue color almost almost gray but it's got just that hint of blue under it and it's going on nicely Okay, that went on nice. It looks really pretty. I didn't have any patching, any skipping. It performed as I would expect a ColourPop eyeshadow to perform, especially one from a collab. I feel like their collab palettes always perform better. But let's pop into this shade right here. This is called Irrevocably. That sounded really strange to say that out loud. I don't know why, but I want to put this into my outer corner. So I'm going to go ahead and go in with a Game Beauty EO3 brush. And we're going to pop this in to the outer corner, bringing a little bit of depth. Okay. Again, it's performing nicely. No fallout. A little bit of kick up in the pan, but not a whole lot. Nothing that's bothersome to me. But that looks nice. Nice. 
Okay, so this is what the eyes are looking like. I'm loving the way that this is turning out. I do wanna take that same color with that same brush and I'm just going to fluff this on my lower lash line, but keeping it out on like the bottom, I guess third of my lash line. I wanna keep all the drama out here. We don't wanna make this too like two over the top. I don't have anything going on today. I'm not going anywhere. We're supposed to have like a whole bunch of thunderstorms. So I'm just gonna stay in the house. Kids are at school. And I'm just gonna do some stuff around the house. Some chore work. Okay, that looks nice. I didn't have any fallout with that shade. Even under this eye where I'm not powdered, it didn't do anything weird. So that makes me very happy but let's go ahead and do do I want to do a shimmer let's do a shimmer okay we have choices lots of choices so we have this shade here which is called the Cullens but then we also have this one up here which I'm gonna feel it it's not a pressed glitter this feels like a super shock actually yeah I think that's a super shock but yeah let's play with this shade up here and then maybe put this one where those two shades meet and then for the inner corner i think i want to go in with i think we'll probably end up doing ice cold for the inner corner that sounds like a plan to me so we're gonna go ahead and pop on a little bit of my nyx glitter primer just so I don't have any fallout and I can get a little bit of pop with this shade. Um, Super Shocks, I don't usually need a glitter primer. I still do it anyways, just because I do this with every single shimmer that I put on my lid. I want them to stay put. I don't want them to crease. I don't want them to flake off or anything like that. I want to give them the best shot that they have. Okay. Let's go in with that shade Immortal. And we're going to pop this on to my lid. That's pretty. I like that. It's not chunky. It's not accentuating my texture on my lids. It's going on really nice. And... We're not having any glitter fall out. I do think this is a pressed glitter, but it's like a very soft, creamy pressed glitter, if it is one. I know that at some point ColourPop changed their pressed glitter formulation, and I'm wondering if this is what they changed it to. If you know, let me know down in the comments. Educate me, please. I appreciate it. Okay, that looks pretty. Let's go ahead and take the shade The Collins, which is this one right here, and I'm gonna pop it just a little bit where these two shades meet. Just so we have a nice seamless blend across the lid. That looks really pretty. Let's do the inner corner and then I can do the other eye. So for the inner corner, we're gonna go in with ice cold right here so I'm going to pick this up with a Morphe M213 brush and I am going to spray it with some MAC Fix Plus just because I don't want to have any fallout I don't put glitter glue right there and I need it to have some sort of tackiness okay That's got some sparkle to it. I like that, that looks pretty. All right, let me go ahead and finish up this other eye and then do some liner and mascara and then we'll come back to finish up this look.
Okay, so this is going to complete the eye look with the Twilight palette, and I really like the way that this turned out. It's blue, but it's like a smoky, moody blue, and I love that. But let me show you what I use to finish off this eye look. So I went in with one of my Martine Cosmetics Coal Liners. This is in the shade Anthracite in my waterline. I was going to do a blue and then I thought that would be just a little too much. So I went with a gray liner instead. And then for my lid, I lined it with my Glam Light Calligrapher liner. And then I threw on some Blend Bunny Omni Lash Mascara. And this is what we got. Oh, I also went in and set my face with the Patrick Ta She's Thirsty Dewy Milk Mist. I've really been enjoying this because it's not a mattifying finishing spray. It's like a dewy finishing spray. And... I've really, really been enjoying that. But I do like the way that this look turned out. I think it looks beautiful. I'm excited to wear this all day, but let's do a lip. So I think for lips today, we're gonna go in with one of the new Huda Beauty Faux Filler Lip Glosses. Now these are really, really neat. These retail for, I believe it's $17 a piece. I could be wrong. Let me double check that really quick before I go lying to ya. Huda Beauty. These retail for $19 a piece. I was close, only off by a little bit. But these are really cool because the faux filler isn't like a plumping lip gloss. Like you automatically think, oh, it's a plumping lip gloss. No, the filler comes from once it kind of meshes with your natural, um, like body heat and melts down into your lips it fills in all of your lines and just gives you this gorgeous like filled in plump juicy lip and it does exactly that so let's go ahead and line these lips first i'm going to go in with an unearthly lip pencil in the shade fiery we're just going to line these lips okay Let's throw on this gloss. This is the shade Foxy. And first of all, I love the doe fit on here. It is like ergonomically perfect. It hugs your lip in all the right ways. These are pigmented and you do get a lot, so just be careful. I usually kind of tap and then run my lips together. but they're comfortable on the lips. They do have like a sugary smell to them. I can't taste them and the smell does go away. It doesn't linger, but this is a beautiful gloss formula. Like look at how shiny my lips are. They look plump, they look juicy and no stringy thing it's not sticky which is what i absolutely love about these glosses but this is going to complete my look using all of these products i'm excited to wear this throughout the day see how it holds up we're going to try and get at least a good 10 hours out of this it is already 9 48 in the morning so i don't think i'm going to be able to make it to that 12 hour mark just because it is a school night when i'm doing this and we usually shut everything down and go to bed around nine o'clock i know but we get up early we like our beauty rest around here and yeah, but we're going to get at least a good 10 hour wear out of this. So I'm going to go ahead and go throughout my day, do a check in, maybe two. We'll see how it wears. And then we will come back at the end of the day and discuss all of these products. All right, y'all. So we're here for my first check in of the day. It is about 345. So we are sitting right around the six hour mark. And this is what the makeup is looking like. It is holding up so nicely. My eyeshadow still looks good. I'm not having any issues with anything running. My under eye, this is the one that I did not powder and I am getting a little bit of transfer from the eyeshadow. Um, but that's kind of to be expected, but I'm not having like any more creasing or settling than I was um, at the beginning when I first applied it. This side still looks fantastic, but everything is holding up really well. The um, foundation is not breaking down or coming apart on me. My blush and bronzer still looks really good. This is where my glasses sit as well as this. But um, yeah, so far so good. So we're going to give this another 
four. I'd like to give it five hours if possible and see how it holds up, but I will see y'all in just a little bit. All right, so we are back. It has been a little, like 11-ish hours since I put this makeup on. It is 8.27 p.m. and I think this looks great. I love the way that my complexion is looking. I didn't have any of the products fade. My bronzer's still there, my blush is still there, everything still looks great. Obviously, my lip did come off. I have eaten, I have had coffee. It lasted a good amount of time, but it was just a liner and a gloss, so I didn't expect it to last all day. It's not anything that claims to, but let's start with the foundation. Um, the Ilia, what is this called? The Ilia Skin Rewind Complexion Stick. I think this is beautiful. I love the way that it's sitting on my skin. I love the way that it wore. You saw when I applied it, it applied beautifully. I really enjoyed that. It was just so soft, so hydrating. It just melted into my skin. Um, it didn't break up anywhere. It still looks good around my nose, around my mouth. It sunk in just a little bit to the lines on my forehead, but not too much. I've had other foundations that do worse. And even like around my nose where I wear my glasses, it didn't wear off a whole, whole lot. So that's really nice. It held up beautifully beautifully for the what 11 ish hours that I've had it on. I'm really enjoying this. I'm excited to keep using it. The concealer, the Kali Ray Hideaway, what's this called? Brightening and Hydrating Under Eye Serum Concealer. This is beautiful. I do really enjoy this. I think the claims are very true. It did settle in just a little bit, that deep line that I have under my eyes, but once it did that, it didn't budge any further. It didn't crease, it didn't get all cakey. The longer it set on my skin, the more beautiful it looked because I noticed when I first applied this, it was kind of not the best looking under my eye, but once it warmed up to my skin, it looked beautifully, or it looked beautiful. I did have some transfer from my eyeshadow, but I think that if you're going to wear eyeshadow, powder it. I powdered this one, I didn't have that issue. If you're just going for like a simple makeup look and you're just going to throw on like an eyeliner and some mascara, you can definitely get away without powdering it. But this impressed me. I really, really enjoyed this. I was afraid this is going to be like bright pink. If you look at the swatches on Sephora, this looks like it's pink, like pastel pink, and it's not. It's a beautiful, um, beautiful formula, beautiful concealer. I'm excited to keep playing with this one and keep using it because this feels amazing under the eyes. Like it is so cooling and hydrating. It's just like a burst of like everything you want in the morning. This is beautiful. Let's move on to the bronzer, the YSL All Hours Hyper Bronzer. This is a beautiful bronzer. It is. It is very pigmented. I was pretty surprised at how pigmented it was because usually luxury products aren't super pigmented. They're more on the buildable side. So while you can get the pigmentation, you really have to build up to it. And this one, I had to go in with a light hand. It is a little on the darker side. I probably should have gone in or gotten the lighter one, but I ordered it online. I didn't get it in person. I don't have a Nordstrom near me. I would have to drive into like a really crowded part of town and that's not happening. But this is beautiful. I do enjoy it. I don't know if it's going to be a favorite formula, but it's one that I don't I don't regret it. I don't feel like I need to return it. I will use it. I will love it, but I don't know if it will become a favorite and I don't know if it's one that I would ever repurchase if I needed to, but it is a beautiful formula. I do really enjoy it and the packaging is gorgeous. The Polite Society, what is it? The Polite Pop I can't remember something blush. Polite Pops Powder Blush Stick. I use the shade Sydney today and this is, it's a cream formula. It is a cream formula, but it's an interesting cream formula because whenever you feel it, like it looks creamy whenever you rub your finger on it, but it immediately goes to a powder finish. Um, I did really enjoy this. I put it on with a brush. I want to try it 
under powder and I also want to try like swiping it on and see how it works but this is an interesting formula it really is um, it's unlike anything else that I have in my collection like I said it looks like a cream and even whenever you're swatching it it looks like a cream but it just it goes on and it feels like a powder so I have really been enjoying it I'm excited to keep trying it I have another color that I picked up as well I think that one is called Paris it's a pink one but these are cute these are fun I like the packaging I'm really enjoying this so far okay the ColourPop Twilight Collection. I have the two Super Shock highlighters. I have Vampire Skin and Meadow, and I believe these are the cheeks that they went on. So I believe I have Meadow over here and Vampire Skin over here. These are beautiful. Um, it is the ColourPop Super Shock formula, so I already know it. I already love it. Like I said, it's not a favorite formula, but it is a really good one, and especially at an affordable price point, it's a fantastic formula. I think these are actually a little bit bigger than their normal Super Shock size. Maybe it's in my head, but this feels this feels bigger like bigger around I could be wrong but um, these are beautiful I do really enjoy these I know that this has been selling out like crazy but they're supposed to be doing another huge restock coming up soon sometime this spring I will keep y'all posted in the community section so if you haven't had your had your chance to get your hands on this collection yet you can do so then because I'm really enjoying it I did only pick up that in the palette but the pieces that I got I like. The Twilight ColourPop eyeshadow palette. This is beautiful. This is fun. My eyes look fantastic. They're not creased. The color is still there. I didn't have any fading and I think it's a fantastic um, palette. It's the good ColourPop quality that I know, that I love, that I expect in an IP collab because I feel like that's where their formula really hits home. But this is fun. It's beautiful. I'm excited to continue to play with it. I'm excited to try out the other colors in here, create more looks with it. I only stuck with the blues today, but I will continue to test this out. I will probably do a short using this palette and I will have it in a future palette ranking where I can give you my final thoughts. And then lastly, we have the Huda Beauty Faux Filler Lip Gloss. These are fantastic. I've really been enjoying these. This was not a first impression. I could probably actually give you my final thoughts review on these. I love these. These are very shiny. I don't think that they're quite as shiny as what she shows. I think that's more of like a lighting thing. Like, yeah, she probably didn't touch them up, but if you have the lighting shining just right on your lips with a lip gloss on, yeah, it's going to look ridiculously shiny and like vinyl like, but I will say these do perform the way she says they're going to perform. Once they heat up to like your skin temperature and just kind of mesh into your lips, they really do fill in any lines, any dryness that you have and just give you the most beautiful, healthy, plump pout and I really enjoy them. I like the smell. They smell very, very sweet. I do enjoy the four colors that I've picked up. Well, I picked up three colors and I picked up the clear one and I'm really enjoying them. So these are good. I also like the price point. They're like 19 bucks and this is weighty. This is heavy. I'm so excited to see what else Huda has on the horizon. But I think that is going to be it for this video. That's all I have. Those are the new products that we tried today. And I want to hear from y'all as always. Let me know all of your thoughts down below in that comment box. Let's light it up. Let's have that conversation. Let's chat. Did you pick any of these up? Were you curious about any of these? Did I help you make any buying decisions, whether it was something to pick up or whether it was something to kind of stay away from? Let me know all of your thoughts. I want to know. And as usual, I want to thank you all so, so much for spending your time with me and watching my video. It means so, so much for me. And if you enjoyed this bit, this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you leave and click on that notification bell so that you can be notified of all my future posts here on my channel. I do post quite a few videos every week, most days, if not every single day, and I wouldn't want you to miss one. And until my next video, have a good one. Bye.